Now things aren't always as they seem. Case in point, this 1969 Lotus Elan S4. Looks pretty stock from here. That is of course until you look under the bonnet. Welcome back to Collecting Cars and today I'm finding out how you convert your classic into an electric car. This is the brainchild of engineer Mark Sanders, who's lovingly converted his Elan into an electric car, or as he fondly calls it, Lotus Elon. See what you've done there, Mark. The Lotus Elan was one of Colin Chapman's classics. It epitomized the Lotus ethos of light is right. The original Elan was a simple recipe, lightweight fiberglass body, twin cam engine, and rear wheel drive. It's no wonder then that Mark has chosen an Elan for his project. Ironically, it was Lotus that Elon Musk turned to when Tesla looked for the basis of its first electric car, the Tesla Roadster. Fitting then that this car has fondly been named Elon. Right, it's probably time to bring in Mark and find out a little bit more about Elon. So Mark, come on over here. Welcome and, and thanks very much for, for bringing Elon down here today. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, where did the idea come about? Not, not specifically with this Lotus, but when did you decide, right, I'm gonna convert a classic car or any car into, into an electric car? Oh, 20 years ago, I was into electric model aeroplanes and I saw the potential then. And I always loved Lotuses and especially Lotus Elan. So yes. the idea was sitting there. And was it always going to be an Elan or were there other cars that you considered converting? Yeah, I, I wondered about an Elise, but then I realized, hang on, that's already been done. It was the Tesla Roadster. Yes. And I actually love Elans just because they're so small and compact and light and they fit me. It's a Surprisingly. So um, once you decided, right, it's going to be a Lotus LAN S4, um, what's the next step? Do you, do you then have to go and do a load of research on what batteries are going to actually fit this car or how, which way around do things work? Well, I actually, I thought I'll buy an S4 and I look for about six months to a year and, and I'll run it and do track days in it and really get it handling really, really well. Yeah. And then I'll do the conversion. Yes. What actually happened was I got one and this one and it, it um, I had such a lot of hassle tuning the engine and every time I went out it was 15, 20 quid of petrol and yeah. and I thought, sod this, I'll, I'll start the conversion early. <laughs> How did you go about doing your research and, and where did you find where did you find the battery for this car? Right, well, first of all, weight was the absolute core of the project. I wanted to keep the same weight and the same power. So, so the original Elan was around 680 kg? Yeah, that was the target. Yeah, right. And in fact, I'm really pleased. It's actually worked out at 650. 650. So, so you've managed to you managed to strip back more weight than the original. Colin Chapman would be very pleased with that result. I he? think so. Yeah, <laughs> added lightness. And and the thing was, the research into the batteries pointed to Tesla because their batteries were at the time or still are the lightest for the amount of power they give yeah. and so I used five Tesla modules out of a crash Model X oh. uh, and uh, put them in different positions so there's three in the front and two in the back yeah. to get exactly the same weight distribution as the original car and those batteries the five modules actually weigh the same as a twin cam engine right so it was straight swap the three in the front which is 75 kilos yeah and there's uh, two in the back which is 50 kilos right and then the motor sits underneath the battery pack and makes up the difference to the same weight as a twin cam. Yes. So the weight distribution was is exactly the same and that took a lot of kind of juggling and that's where a lot of the research went into getting that both the weight and the balance the same. And in the process of that research were you able to call on anyone or is that something you did all, all yourself? The mechanical stuff I did all myself because that's kind of my background but the electronic stuff that took a lot of the time just simply learning. I bet it did uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know I mean camber systems and things like that it's it's uh, it's tough but it's very interesting to learn. So how, how long in, in from start of project to where we are now has that, has that taken? About a year. About a year, yeah. Mm. And so, um, with the output now, what kind of what kind of power output are you you getting from those batteries? 
uh, the motor? The, 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 the batteries are actually 28 kilowatt hours, yep. which is, you know, it's not bad. It's about the same as an electric mini, uh, Honda E, that kind of thing. Yep. But the car is so much lighter, it's only 650 kilos, yeah. which is half most of the other electric cars, if not less. So the range for 28 uh, kilowatt hours is not bad at all. So what kind of range are you getting on I, this? I, I get, if I'm really booting it, around about, you know, 100 miles, maybe less in winter. Yeah. But take it really steady and you can squeeze 180 maybe even 200 out of it you know see that's plenty and and, yeah. pre and pretty much what the uh, established manufacturers are, are, are putting out at the moment isn't it so you're, yeah. you're you're right on the button there there's actually still um, a gear stick in here and there's, yeah. there's actually still the original gearbox you're, yes. you're using that so, you've, so you have got gears in this electric car why why have you kept that why haven't you just stripped that out as well well I think the main reason was uh, I wasn't quite sure about the ratio yeah. And so I wanted the option to um, try the different ratios. Uh, and I also wanted the option to either be a cruiser or, let's be frank, a hooligan. Yes. Because in first gear, it's basically just all wheel spin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all that torque at the bottom end. But cruising in top is very gentle and very quiet. So it's nice to have the option. And, yeah. and the optimum gear is third gear, which will do everything from naught to about 85, 90. Lovely. Right, well, can we have a look under the hood? Can we, sure, can we take this sure. off and, let, and let, have let's a look take, Let's take it off. Um, How do we do that? Access. You just pull this knob here, which opens it, and then you unhook a spring here. There we go. And there we are. It comes. You got it? Yeah. Oh, my word. <laughs> that light. Is, that is really light. <laughs> Okay, so this is the sort of the, the, the core, the core of things here. Um, now I can I can see that it's got the the massive Tesla battery pack here. What else have we got here at the front? Right, we've got the motor controller, which is this thing here. Yeah, and that's plumbed into the battery, the whole battery system. So that takes 125 volts and basically converts it into three phase to drive the motor. Right. And the motor is tucked right underneath the battery. It's only about that big. Yeah. Weighs about 60 kilos. Fantastic. Um, and it fits where the, I guess, the crankshaft of the twin cam used to fit. Yeah. Um, the key thing about the Tesla batteries are, is that they have water channels running all the way through, rather than the LG packs, which tend to be pouches with, with just water cooling on the bottom. And so that's one of the reasons why they're, they're, they're very effective. And so this is the, the, the water uh, cooling cooling system. Uh, so you've got water running all the way through the back battery pack, the front battery pack, and in the summer it, it it's cool, the, need to be cooled by the radiator, which yes. is off a Formula Ford, <laughs> super it? lightweight. And in winter, they need to be heated up, actually, um, uh, to, to, because they don't work very well when they're cold, which yes. is uh, which is uh, one thing I've got to do, which is I'm afraid it's <laughs> yeah. going to be rather cold Yeah, for you. I've just found out that there's going to be no heater in here today, and it's a very cold day, which is why we're in these big jackets. But um, you've done a great job. I mean, it's all, all packed in absolutely beautifully. There's, there's no space wasted in there at all, is there? I mean, no. it, it's remarkable that, 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 it, that it fits so well, actually. Yeah. Which is no coincidence, which is probably why you chose, chose this car. So how long does it take to charge? What kind of charging time are you getting out of it? I can charge up at about seven kilowatts, which takes about, if it was completely flat, four hours. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's pretty it, good. It's not bad. I, I couldn't afford a more expensive charger because chargers are damn expensive. <laughs> and where are you plugging it in? Where's the, where's the plug-in point? Um, where you put the fuel in. You've actually managed to keep it in the <laughs> yes. same filler cap there. That's brilliant. Yeah. So what's this? Just push down push and... Push down and lift up and, and there's the, Fantastic. Uh, the uh, contacts. Yeah, yeah, nicely sealed. And then another battery pack in, in the back in the boot here. Yes. And um, actually, you can see we've still got pr pretty much all the uh, uh, you know the original boot space of of the Elan here, and then buried deep in here uh, on the floor of the boot is a, is another battery pack, and that just sort of sits snugly away there. So um, you can still pop your bag in for a weekend away or your shopping or whatever. This actually you probably would see taking a trip down the supermarket because it's just turn and go. Yeah, perfect. Let's have a look on the inside then, if you don't mind, and you can just just um, talk us through how that what the startup process is then. So we're, we're sat in there. You've yeah. got the um, first of all um, the, just the turn key to ignition on. Yeah, just just like a, a standard car, you turn the ignition on. Yep. And 
it boots up really quickly. It, it says it actually says Elon there, which you can nice program. touch. Everything is programmable on the on the electronics, which is fantastic. You know the regen, all that kind of thing you can program. Um, and then here we've got basically the important details about the battery, mainly its temperature uh, as well as its its uh, range. And then you've got things like the the voltage and the current that, that it's it, it's taking. Now you were telling me earlier actually the 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 power from these batteries is good enough to sort of it, to, to run all the electrics at home. <laughs> yeah, tw I mean 28 kilowatt hours is actually over twice a, a, a Tesla Powerwall. Yeah. And so um, I've got an adapter and a uh, grid tie inverter so I can plug the battery pack into the house and it, it matches the, the grid, you know, 50 hertz and powers the house. It powers all the, all the kind of it's like got base the car load. powering the house. That's yeah, all the base load of the house is covered by this battery if I want to. Yeah. Wish I hadn't bought the Tesla battery uh, yet. Amazing. <laughs> all right then, well, let's pop the bonnet back onto the front of the car. You hop out and we'll go for a drive. Okay, you're on. <laughs> Right, we're going off for a drive now. You can see that Mark actually has a Tesla Roadster. So we're going out in Lotus Elon and the Tesla Roadster. This is gonna be a pretty epic drive, actually. My first trip in an electric car, my first drive in an electric car, an electric Lotus. In the original LAN, you'd be sort of burbling away now, shifting through first and second, but I've selected third here and there's no noise at all. Driving the standard LAN, you're playing around with a very tight gearbox, balancing the throttle, listening to all the pops and bangs and the engine makes. And in this, well, it's just foot down and away you go. It's super smooth, actually. This has already caught on because I know Mark's created this himself, but there are a number of companies now who will take a classic or modern classic and put some batteries in it and convert it to electric for you. We've got the likes of the guys doing Zero EV, They've done the Mazda MX-5. And then we've got, at the other end, Lunas. He'll take you an XK120 or a Range Rover or a classic Rolls-Royce and convert that in sumptuous luxury. So it's happening. We all know legislation's coming and that internal combustion engine cars are probably gonna be ruled out at some point. At which point, electric has to be the only option for us. And so to convert something like this into electric means you can take the joys of a classic Lotus and still get out on the B roads and have a really good time. This is no longer a novelty, this is the real deal. Whoa, away we go. Oh. Wonderful, wonderful car. Now you can put this car on regen, which means when I take my foot off the accelerator, there's braking there for you, which then charges up the batteries. But if you're not used to driving electric cars, that can sometimes be a little disconcerting. So I'm just getting used to this. But that regen function is really super cool. So if you're about having a car which you can take out on a Saturday or Sunday for a lovely drive like this, then this is probably a great option. It's got the classic looks and then the reliability and the low cost that EV offers. It's a tempting proposition, isn't it? I think if Colin Chapman could see this now, he'd be very proud because he was a man that was all about stripping out everything that you didn't need. So the thought that he could have better performance, same weight distribution and power, he'd be all over this. Oh, what a drive. 
you enjoy that? You've done a great job, Mark. It really is. It's it's fantastic. I mean, I think when you've got the classic looks and, and the performance, it's it's a wonderful thing. You've done a fantastic... I, I couldn't catch you on those windy B roads. Honestly, yeah, well, you, were, you were zipping ahead. <laughs> Thanks ever so much for the opportunity today, getting out with both of these, but particularly with, with Elon. The immediacy of the power delivery of the electric is pretty intoxicating, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. It's been well, great having you drive it. It makes, it makes a change. It's a, great. Amazing to drive here with this gorgeous I backdrop know. in these two cars. What a fantastic experience. There is no doubt that this is the future. Thanks very much to Mark for allowing me to take Elon out. And if you've got something as unique as this, then do get in touch. Remember, for more great content, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thanks for watching and see you soon.